we wanted to build on the success and importance of this community, we've launched a new community program. And this is called the Adobe Campus Leader Program. If our AEL community is our elite group of folks who really have tremendous reach and impact, these are folks who are doing amazing work in the trenches. They're the great educator in your school, the superstar who may teach down the hall from you. <clears throat> these are folks who are using our tools, who are innovative, who are creative, excited, and passionate about what they're doing. We wanted to engage with this audience as well. So we created a really flexible program. And I think some of what we're seeing so far has been really interesting. Our customers want to use this in different ways. Indiana University, for example, has decided to use their campus leaders on different campuses. The university has five different campuses. They want a representative on each campus who can be a champion, who can help other educators and engage with them. We've been working with the Alberta School District in Canada, a big province uh, in Western Canada. And they have a professional development program, but they want educators to go out and be representatives of that professional development program. So they've used this program in combination with some of their existing professional development structures as a way to engage educators. This is fantastic. We're really excited to see folks picking this up and finding ways to use this program that makes sense for their institutions. I invite you to do the same. Uh, we've also seen plenty of individuals sign up or groups of teachers sign up together. That's fantastic. This is really the way this program is designed. I have to give credit to Anna, uh, who's in the front here, in part for the idea for this program. She did some amazing work in Australia, really pulling together educators by region that have an opportunity to meet face to face, to share their work with each other, to learn from each other. Uh, we looked at the strength of that program and thought we need to make a, a create a support structure that would allow other folks to do this, that would allow our customers to do this as well. So you apply in the education exchange. It's a very straightforward process. Once you're a member, you then have access to all sorts of special benefits. <coughs> so if you know anybody who's a superstar who'd be interested in engaging with us, we'd love to invite them to join. Then we also create resources that support teaching creativity in the classroom. This is our form these are our formal curricular pieces. There are more than 6,000 pages of resources connected to this. What we're trying to do in creating these kinds of resources it make, is make it easy for folks to teach their students critical skills in these areas. We know that our products change quickly, curriculum does not change so quickly. We want to make it easy for educators to be able to update their curriculum. So we do that work for them. We update the curriculum, we publish them for free on the education exchange. And this curriculum, it's licensed under Creative Commons, so you can use it in any way you like, you can pull it apart. It's project-based and a spiral curriculum, so if there's one section that you want to use and plug into curriculum, fantastic. That's what it's designed for. So it's just free and available for you to use. The other kinds of resources that exist within the exchange, and there are almost 7,000 of them now, some of those are created by Adobe. So we've created some great resources around digital publishing, but a number of them are created by our Adobe education leaders this top group of folks from around the world who are really active on the exchange. So not only do they share their work and share their resources, they comment on other people's resources. They ask, they ask questions, generate ideas. So you'll see a lot of their work on the exchange. And then you'll also see just other educators, folks who have a great idea and are teaching something in their classroom and want to share it. It's been really exciting to see what people are sharing and doing within the exchange. Finally, one of the key things that my team works on is how do we help you launch student careers? So we run a couple of different programs. One is the certification program that Wayne mentioned earlier. We've had more than 300,000 students in the world pass the certification exams and earn those. They then use those as a way to demonstrate to industry or to higher education that they have a certain set of knowledge and skills. There are six different certifications that are available to students now. Uh, we've certainly seen lots of growth in Korea in terms of the use of the, of the certifications, as well as in India. Uh, the United States has really strong certification program. <coughs> the young woman who's pictured here was the winner of the ACA competition this last year. We hosted one for Photoshop for the first time in Washington, D.C. Each of the different regions ran their own competitions, and then those winners came and joined us in Washington, D.C. We had a really interesting competition there. Microsoft does a similar competition, but theirs is really about speed and accuracy. They want to know how quickly can you do things 
in Excel and how well. We created a different kind of competition that was really pretty amazing. We partnered with the Global Fund for Children, and they gave the students a challenge. They had eight hours to create a poster using assets that had been approved by this nonprofit, and then presented them to a panel of industry experts. The experts then judged them and selected winners. So this woman from Korea won first prize for her, for her poster, really fantastic. Uh, the second place winner was from Colombia, and the third place winner was from Taiwan. So I have to say, it hey, showed up really well for this. It was really impressive. We'd love to see more students involved in this. This year's competition will be held in Anaheim, so it'll be a visit to Disneyland, which is fun for students. But I think more importantly, we've arranged a visit for uh, students to meet some of the designers at Disneyland and to see how they use these tools. So I think that'll be fantastic. We'd love to see lots of students participate. Last year we had 14 countries represented. I think there were almost 35,000 entries to the competition, so it's really a big deal to have ended up in first place as a result of this. The judges were incredibly impressed by the work that the students were doing and the way in which they were designing and creating. So I wanted to share that with you. One of the other key ways in which we can launch student careers is around portfolio. And helping students manage and create a portfolio that they then curate and own and make sure it really communicates the best things about their work. And Behance offers some interesting opportunities for that. They have a student show where students can share their work. One of the things that I'm talking to Behance about is that I would love to get some data from Behance. They've got lots of employers who are looking for our students they want to hire. And so they're getting cool data about the kinds of searches that they do, the kinds of portfolios that appeal to employers. I would love to share that. And so we're working as a team to figure out how can we capture that knowledge and then reflect that back to you to give you some data to use as you're working with students for creating a portfolio. And then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the EAA. A fantastic competition. It is wrapping up June 20th, so there's still plenty of time to submit. This is a competition for design students. So the students who participate are mostly in design schools. They are submitting their work. Uh, it's a free competition to participate in, which is unusual for a design competition. The judges are amazing industry professionals. Uh, they take the student work incredibly seriously and use it to recruit students. Uh, so they come in part because they're really interested in seeing the future of design, where we're going, but also because they want to hire students. Uh, and it's been a really great opportunity to meet these students, to see their work, and to see the reaction of industry. We had the award ceremonies in New York this last year, and I got to go on um, and on tours of some of the local industry with the students. We got to see how they work, their process. They, most of them walked us through a project. And then at the end, almost all of them handed out their business cards and said, call us, please apply. We're really interested in talking to you. The students left with job offers. It was kind of amazing. So we were lucky enough to have a number of students from APAC who participated this year. And I'll show you the work that they submitted. But I wanted to talk about how we're innovating with this program. I think it's fantastic for the top students who get to come and travel to another city to meet other students. Not only do they get just professional visibility and recognition, but they build a community. We've had students start design firms together from around the world. Uh, there are a couple that we use at Adobe because they've been so fantastic to continue to work with. But what we've done in the last year is try and serve a broader number of students. That if we get almost 4,000 submissions to this competition, and there are only 11 winners, we want to make sure that there's value to all the students who are participating. So we've started a mentorship program and a portfolio review. Any student who enters the competition is eligible for a mentorship and for a portfolio review from an expert. We've worked with EcoGrata to select more than, this year we've got more than 100 mentors who have agreed to select students to work with. And they select them based on their fields, on their interest. They're not always the winners or the semi-finalists. It's been really exciting to see that kind of opportunity for students and to give them that kind of visibility. These uh, mentors come from all over the world. They're often looking for folks within their region. So I would encourage your students to submit, if only for the value of having a contact with an industry. So here's, here's some of the submissions from the APAC region. This is, in fact, the winner that Wayne talked about previously. And also these 
installation design. The students were finalists from Korea. We have print communications from Korea as well. This was a Create Your Own Font kit. It was beautiful. A really amazing packaging. It's very cool. Then we had two from Taiwan. This was a game art and development from Taiwan. And then finally, print communications from Taiwan as well. In the past, we've had winners and finalists from Malaysia, from Thailand, from Japan, uh, from, uh, certainly from Australia as well. Really fantastic competition. It's free to enter. Students most often enter work that they've already created as part of their classes. So we'd love to have more participation from the region and be able to show the world the kind of work that you're doing as well. So I wanted to talk about our overall strategy, and I hope this is clear from some of the things that we've talked about, I've talked about today. We want to spark people's ideas, creativity, and interest, both with educators and with students. We want to connect people. With our thought leadership work, that's one of the key things that Adobe can bring to this. We're uniquely positioned to be an advocate for creativity and education. We sit with, with folks in industry. We sit with designers and with education as well. And being able to bring those folks together at the same table to share information, to share ideas, is a key thing that we can do. We're also working together to bring, working with nonprofits to bring them together. It's been really exciting to be a convener and to have a seat at the table, but to be able to talk with other folks who are engaged in some of the core ideas. And then we want to launch this new generation of, of creatives, and that's creatives with a lowercase c. This is not creatives as people have traditionally thought of them. It's all of us. It's anybody who has an idea and wants to share it, and wants it to go viral, to be heard, to be successful. I urge you all to join us, take the creativity pledge. I've certainly seen some folks doing that over the last couple days. If you take a picture and, and um, tweet it, that's fantastic. There's hashtags here as well. We have some buttons to give out to folks who enjoy, who engage with us. Um, and essentially, the, the purpose of this is really to try to generate some clear commitment to the, about the importance of creativity in education. It's very general. We're not asking anybody to sign up for a particular idea or a particular way to teach creativity. But it's to recognize and acknowledge the, the importance of creativity for all of our students and for the work that we do. One of the questions that's asked around this has to do with, what are you going to do? What's your commitment? How are you going to support creativity in the classroom? It's been fascinating to read that, to read those. Everything from including design thinking uh, in your classroom, to allowing students to fail, to creating other opportunities, uh, to launching a whole new course on creativity, or to, allow, to asking open-ended questions, rather than just looking for the answer in the classroom. Lots of ways to answer that, but I think um, this is something that we're really excited about and hope that you'll want to participate in. And then finally, I wanted to say thank you. I think, um, one of the best things for me about working at Adobe is having a chance to meet with folks like you. And part of the reason for that is that I learn so much. And I regularly am amazed by the kinds of things that your students are doing, that you're doing, by your thinking, your vision, your commitment to the work that you're doing. And so I so appreciate having the time to hear from you and to, ref and to reflect on the kinds of things I learn from events like this. I think for us at Adobe, we really uh, value the opportunity to listen to you, to understand what are the kinds of things that you need, how can we support your work. You can see from the work that my team does that we're trying to make it really easy for educators to teach creativity, to empower students. We want to create the kinds of programs that do that and are successful doing that. So thank you for participating in all of this. And I think together we can change the world.